welcome back to the playground. My name is MJ. Today we're reacting to Eminem and Sway's interview, the part two. Um, before I go any further, I wanted to mention something that I keep forgetting to say. I've been thinking about on Fridays, doing it like a flashback Friday and having that be the theme of this channel. So basically revisiting like old videos from back in the day, whether it's art, rap, R&B, pop, whatever it is. Like whatever your favorite videos are that are really like nostalgic vibes, I really would like to like go back and watch the video because I feel like a lot of us don't realize how different we saw it back then to how they are now. Thumbs up if you guys are with that, like if you even understand what I'm saying. But anyway, if you guys are ready to get this video started, give me a thumbs up and let's press play. Part two is about to be good. I already know. How do you describe your relationship with Joe Budden? I mean, listen, me and Joe Budden aren't, you know, we're not friends like that. We're not like, we didn't go to the same fucking high school or something. You know okay, what I'm keep it real. So I get that part. But when I'm out here flying around to different places and doing interviews and trying to use my platform to pump up Slaughterhouse every chance I get, mm. and you're using your platform to fucking trash me, mm. and I'm one of the things that keeps this shit moving. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you're doing something, you got a voice in hip hop, so you actually could be affecting this ship a little bit. You know Definitely. Because you don't owe me nothing. That's real. But I've never got in a fucking interview and been like, Joe Button shit is fucking trash. That last time. Yeah, album like put what out, is what is it about? I don't trash. know Joe Button beyond so like that's kind of pump, pump, pump it up. Pump, 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 pump it up. Like that is literally the only song. I, I know I'm sure he has other music, but that's the only song I know of him. Like and I know that I, you know, I, heard, I read from one of you guys that Eminem uh, signed a group that he used to be on, but what is the beef? Like, why does he feel the need? I mean, beyond the fact that I feel like, again, he's also clout chasing, but I've never understood that. Like, why go out of your way to just, like, dog someone? The attitude I took to this whole album, Kamikaze, is like, all right, what if I give everybody my opinion right. about them? Mm-hmm. But look, I want to talk about Slaughterhouse because uh, there's a lot of, including myself, people that really feel like the Slaughterhouse saga was unfinished. Mm -hmm. You know, I know there's a Glass House mm -hmm. album that was pretty much completed but never released. Okay. Right? Where we had left it about two years ago was everybody came in and different, some, some of the guys in the group picked certain beats, some of the guys didn't feel those beats, so they like the other beats and it was like there was definitely enough songs to put an album out but for the most part it wasn't a complete picture because everybody wasn't on the same page of mm, that's so, important though so i thought they were gonna go back go back home regroup and try to make a few more songs i didn't hear anything from that and then and at that point i started getting really deep into revival okay. you know i was recording every day so Couple months go by, and from what I understand it to be, what I was told, I didn't hear this firsthand, but okay. Joe said, Slaughterhouse ain't hot right now, we don't have a buzz, we need to put out a mixtape. From that point, everybody- Okay, so what's that about? I get that maybe he wasn't working directly with them, so that makes sense? So he didn't know all the other stuff, but he said, what I heard is that Joe said, so were that really that, like even, you know, disconnected anyway. Like, cause if that's the case, why is Joe even so mad? He started branching out. Royce went and did his album, Prime. Like, everybody started doing their own kind of solo shit. So I thought they were just happy with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, Fair enough. they just wanted to maybe work on their own projects for a while and we'd come back and visit this or whatever. When we made the first Slaughterhouse album. The Welcome to Our House. Welcome to Our House. That was another album that I felt like Holy shit, people literally just trashed this. They trashed this album, it was a huge fucking backlash of, oh man, this ain't what we wanna hear, it sounds too polished and all that shit. What's wrong with sound and polish though? And like from last, from yesterday's interview also, I realized that Eminem really is, I, I think he might have already admitted that, but he really takes that stuff to heart. He takes that feedback to heart. And people are, are like, you like, know. You're not, listen. You're critiquing these guys who are fucking wordsmiths. Hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, so you're, there's, look, there's a certain type of person that, oh man, I like, I only like the beats. There's a certain type of person that will lean towards, 
lyrics more. There's a certain type of person that would lean right. towards a voice more. They right. like better. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody leans towards towards their own thing. But I was just like, holy shit! Because to me, the beats were crazy on that album. Right. And only thing I did was added my little touch of like sprinkling music in these tracks and mixing them to try to bring out, you know, the production a little bit. Right. Um, which I don't even know if I did any actual beats on there on the hmm. first album, but but all I heard was the backlash that it was too polished. Yeah. Okay. So we said, okay, let's do another album, and then you guys do what you want to do with it. Okay. Which is kind of we left the ball in their court kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to touch it in, in, in a sense of like other than give my opinions on songs. I didn't want to touch it. I didn't Why with that? my production. Because I felt like, okay, if if what if that is the reason yeah. that they didn't sell albums? I don't want to hinder that. You know what I'm saying? So oh, we gave him another album. The next thing I know, I hear Joe talking about who got that money, who who got what money. Mm -hmm. Like he did say, I saw a clip that he put What's up. What? Wait, what? Head. He got what? What is? <laughs> Y'all see how lost I'm looking? What? Oh, this echo is getting on my nerves. I'm sorry, guys. We'll fix that it. He felt like that maybe, perhaps, like he alluded that you and Paul got majority of the money. There, but, the, but the album, I hate to say this because I think the guys are super fucking talented, but right. the album didn't do much to even recoup the first budget. Then we spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on the second album that never came out. Keep it real. What money? What money? Didn't you get? I don't know if I made a fucking dime off Slaughterhouse. I don't care if I made nothing. Mm. I believed in them. Aww. So I, you know, I wanted them to, I wanted them to be huge, man. I really did. I, I wanted a group that lyrical to fucking just bust through everything. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it definitely hurt my feelings a lot when the album didn't do good, the first album. It was just like, fuck, man. Like when 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 we got CeeLo on the hook of the uh, My Life song, mm. I was like, "Yo, this is this might be out of here." What, right. what was the meaning behind the line when you said the last hit? You, I mean, I'm paraphrasing. The last hit you got was with your ex chick. That was what that was. What's that? That was a tap. Just a tap. It was. Wait, a tap. what? Isn't it obvious? Or Sway just trying to be like. Like, is he trying to be shady? Because obviously, the last hit you got was your last chick. Was I mean, isn't that like a really no-brainer? Or is he trying to make him like dig deeper? It was also saying that, that his his uh, alleged domestic abuse, mm. uh, exactly, or whatever, which I'm not going to get into. But but I feel like I feel like the reason I had to do that is because, like I said, there's a there's a there's a fine line between saying, you know what? This guy's really been cool to me. Mm. He's helped me out right. and tried to help out on many occasions. Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna go in on Untouchable like that. I'm gonna say it ain't for me. I'm not crazy about it, whatever, right. whatever. But to, to be the worst song you've ever heard in your life? Yeah, that's a bit much. Have you listened to your own shit? Yeah. Exactly. Do you not listen back? Because yeah. if that's the worst fucking song you've yeah. ever heard in your life. I don't know. But you can tell Eminem really has a sensitive side because I'm trying to think about it like this. Like if I was M, if I had the talent that he had, and if I forget about records, forget about numbers, but if I was as talented as he was, and I had ears to hear myself, okay, I knew how great of a lyricist I was. I, I could care less what a Joe Button says anyway. Do you know what I mean? But you could tell that stuff really bothered him. But, and I, I, but I think it's the fact that he stretches. He stretched it. <laughs> Can't talk to that. He didn't have to say it was the worst song he's ever. Like, I just, again, that, that feels more like just below the belt. It didn't, I don't think it was even a real opinion. He was definitely stretching it. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's interesting. So we'll never see that Glass House album, probably, as far as you know. Look at Sway. He was I really trying to be. I, I don't have the answer diplomatic. to that. I, uh, I, I want to just make it clear, though, that aside from the Joe shit, I think that Slaughterhouse is one of the best rap groups ever to ever happen. Right. 
Wow. But that's that real. He still said it. Even aside, that, that takes, this is what I keep telling you. You guys are missing how big this guy is. Like, when I say big, I'm not talking about famous. I mean, like, I feel like he, he's a, he has a big character. Do you know what I mean? Like, it takes, it really takes a lot for someone to still be able to say that, to give props, because it doesn't seem like people know how to do that anymore. You know? If they don't like you, then you just trash, like he said on the first part. Let's continue, though. And said, I, I, I wish their first album would have connected. Yeah. To more people than it did. I don't. Right. I don't. To this day, I still don't. Me and Paul were like, how, how, what the fuck happened? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but look, man, everybody's not gonna like everything you put out. That's real. Time. So that that was a dream team of MCs, though, and I think a lot to what you're saying um, in regards to why aren't people reacting to these words, Smith? Is that's how we came up? You mm -hmm. know, and honestly, what people may not realize is that's what really separated hip hop from. R&B, that's and real. Another genre True. is our ability to bend words to create patterns yes. that made it unique to mm -hmm. our genre specifically, which it seems like it's something that doesn't get any credibility. Or, or people don't put a whole. Not everybody put a whole lot into that. Mm -hmm. They don't give a lot of credence to that. Right. You know, which is probably um, Slaughterhouse could have been a victim of that. What uh, is in Sway's pocket? <laughs> this guy has pants all bumpy like that. Um, that kind of ideology. Um, you also on this album, um, you went in on MGK, you guys had a discrepancy. Ooh, he mentioned it in his response song, uh, Rap Devil, mm -hmm. you know, that let's call Sway and ask him why I can't get on Shade for a five. Mm -hmm. That was in um, response, so I seen him on the street once and I didn't know he couldn't come up to Shade at that time mm -hmm. uh, for a five. And I said, man, come on up, man. And then I had to see him again and say, hey, man, I don't know what the shit is. Yeah. yeah. But until that gets cleared up. Yeah, you're not allowed. There's no way I can have you. Sorry. Yeah. Well, what's the shit with that? What happened? Well, the shit is, just for the record, the, the thing that was going on that he was saying about my daughter, I didn't even know about that until like literally like a year and a half later. I'm sorry. I love how... Sway is being very diplomatic because there's no way he hasn't heard what's going on But I love that he's still giving Eminem a chance to really tell it from his perspective because he's like So what's the shit with that? Like you passed on the message to MGK told him he couldn't come up and you know He's about what's the shit with that? How, how I don't care how close or not close you and Eminem were if you knew what was going on Okay, I wasn't It just it never hit my radar mm. and then one day you know, you go down the fucking wormhole of YouTube or whatever, right? <laughs> so I see. Love how he said that. Machine Gun Kelly talks about Eminem's daughter, whatever, right? So, what the fuck? Click on it. Yeah. Like, yo, why is he. Then he starts doing a, a press run, basically, wow. about Haley. Mm. I'm like, what the fuck? Yo, my man better. Ooh. Yeah, chill. Look, right? he's getting worked up even talking about it. That's deep. <laughs> So that's not why I dissed him. The reason I dissed him is actually a lot more petty than that. Come on. Okay. The reason that I dissed right? him is because look, look, Sway got closer. Like, let's hear this. I'm saying, right? Okay. Whew. All right. He got on. First, he said. First, first, when he said, I, I'm, the, I'm the greatest rapper alive since my favorite rapper banned me from Shade 45 or whatever he said, right? Uh -huh. Like, I'm trying to hinder his career. So I give a fuck about your career. Right. You think I actually fucking think about you? You know how many fucking rappers that are, are better than you? You're not even Ooh. in the fucking conversation. I don't care if you fucking blow or if you don't blow. Stop! This is what I was saying. This is what I've been saying. He's a non fucking factor to Eminem. That was never, like I said, the petty thing. Okay, I'm ready to, I'm sorry guys, I'm just, ooh, ooh, wow. But then when you get on Tech Nine's album mm -hmm. and you start sending shots, yeah. and people start hitting me up, yo, Machine Gun dissed you, he just dissed mm -hmm. you, he dissed you. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I listen to it, I'm like, did he really diss me though? I keep listening to it, y'all, this rap, you're not gods. And then somebody sends me a screenshot of his Twitter. Mm. And it says, had some shit to get off my chest. You just rap, you not God. Some shit like that. And huh? I was like. A reference to the Rap God song? Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, on the song he said, Y'all just rap, you not God. Mm -hmm. And on Twitter he said, You just rap, you not God. Mm -hmm. 
had some shit to get off my chest. Okay. And I'm seeing, and by the way, this was on the heels of the freestyle. Look at, movement. look at, y'all don't study body language, but I do. This is, this is what I'm all into. Yeah, look at his right leg. How that's changed from when they first started talking in the first interview. He's like on edge. He's like, that's crazy. And look how Sway's leaned in on him. Like, let's, like, we're about to listen to see what's really happening. I'm loving how he's giving the goods right now. about Shade 45. It's like, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Mm. Now, now I'm in this fucking weird thing because I'm like, I gotta answer this motherfucker. Mm. But why? And I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I don't want to cut him off and I don't, I don't want to miss what he's going to say next, so I have to stop it. But why? So that was the thing. It was like, why did, what was Machine Gun Kelly wanting other than clout? Do you get what I'm saying? Why, why take it that far? Cause you guys, like you said, it, a lot of people kept saying it was the daughter issue, and he's like, no, it was even it was even pettier than that. So that's crazy that the daughter didn't got him upset, but that's not even what made him diss him. That's real. Okay, we're learning about human behavior, the things that make us tick, right? How am I do that? It makes that person as as irrelevant as people say I am in, right. in hip hop. Yeah. I make them bigger by getting into this thing where I'm like, mm. I want to destroy him. Right. But I also don't want to make him bigger. There you go. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because exactly. now you're a fucking enemy. Mm hmm So hmm. I'll leave it at that. I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do at this point right now because mm. I'm still kind of waiting to see what. You haven't heard his rap double response? No, I heard it. What do you think? He of said it? no. It's it's not bad for him. Oh. Uh, he has. He said not bad for him. Eminem, you played too much. But yeah, that's why they put, they made sure to put the interviews out first because he's saying, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do. The idea is to keep us on the edge of our seats. I miss all of this. Guys, remember, like, I don't know, my, my timing was just bad, but I was moving around this time and literally, like, my internet was getting connected. I was, I had this stuff already downloaded on my computer, but I could not fucking watch it. And I'm so excited to finally catch it up now. Really, I'm, I'm at this point where I feel like I'm gonna watch three or four in my lonesome. Tomorrow, I want to react to that chloroceptive because you guys said that he got on YouTube reactors in that song. So that's what you guys can probably wait for tomorrow. Good lines, Eddie. Did, did y'all really call Interscope to try to shell this? Fuck no. I, I never made a fucking call. Made a call to Diddy, really? Yeah, exactly. I got Diddy's number. Just hit him up. Yo, Diddy, what up? Never happened. Mm. It didn't feel like a diss to me. It just felt like pitiful. That's what I was seeing. Mm. Like, God, oh, fuck. Now I'm, I'm feeling bad for something I didn't even have nothing to do with. To do with. Yes. So that's how that happened. That's what happened. So he made a reply to my reply. So regardless of what the fuck he wants to say, oh, it was from six years ago, motherfucker. No, it's not. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Mm. Wait. I'm telling you the reason I dissed you now. Ooh. I'm telling you. Now you know. And. If you didn't know, now you know. I'm gonna sit back and I'm gonna wait for a second just to see because if people start firing off mm -hmm. and I try to answer every fucking buddy that I dissed on Kamikaze or had words right. about, I'm gonna be good going the next five fucking years. Yes, you will. <laughs> Making diss song after diss song. Pick you your battles. Pick yeah. your battles. Like. Yes, that's real. You're gonna get hit though. Mm. Trey's all over this project. Trey's um, input was okay. all over it. Mm -hmm. There's a couple songs that he kind of deaded him just yeah. because he didn't have a good reaction to him and he also felt like one of them was going a little far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, hey, what, man. what does that mean? Like how far did it go? It's, <laughs> it, 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 uh, it went, it definitely went Look this way. too far. Okay. Damn, yeah, this is getting good. Yeah, this is definitely something I'm gonna watch on an intimate level. I've decided I'm gonna watch three or four on my own. I'm not trying to make this into an Eminem channel or anything like that. But I'm glad that I at least watched the part that he was dressing MGK on camera. So that was a good look. If you guys enjoyed the video and would like me to do more, definitely give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment below other videos that you like for me to react to. If you're not already a part of my family, definitely subscribe. We are having tons of fun on the playground. And I'll see you guys mañana. Bye.